Hi, in today's video we're going to talk about the mystery of the crackling and staticky Newtone IM5006. And this is from a real service call that I did yesterday at a customer's house in San Francisco. So first, here is the setup. He has a Newtone model IM5006. It was installed around 1992. I rebuilt the power supply in 2014. It had sort of a typical power supply failure. And after I rebuilt it and reinstalled it, it worked perfectly fine for about 18 months. The current problem was suddenly there was a failure in the intercom functions of the entire system and there was a lot of very loud, random, static noise on all the speakers. In discussing it with the homeowner, the cause was unknown. There wasn't any remodeling that he could think of or anything like that that had any impact on the system whatsoever. It just seemed to happen all of a sudden. The only thing going on at the house around the, at the same time that the problem began and he was home when it started was he was having the exterior of his house pressure washed because he was going to have it painted but there are no exterior speakers no patio speakers, there isn't even a front door speaker. So there's no intercom equipment on the outside of the house whatsoever. So we kind of discounted that. I removed the IM5006 master station on the first service call, brought it back to the shop and discovered that it had a problem with the intercom control board. So the intercom control board was repaired and we scheduled the time to take it back. This is the intercom control board out of a Newtone IM5006. And this is a fairly complicated and sophisticated circuit board. It's two-sided, which means there are components on the top and on the bottom. On the bottom, there are actually two microcontrollers. One is for the cassette tape functions and the other is for to um, coordinate the intercom calls and conversation throughout the system. On this side, there are a bunch of 74 series logic ICs. There's the door chime interface, door talk interface, and some other backup battery charging circuits. This is a fairly sophisticated board, and this is actually the board that came out of the customer set. We replaced it with a rebuilt board out of our stock, and then this board will get rebuilt and put back into our inventory. So this was the cause of the immediate problem with the loud static. So yesterday, I went out to his house in San Francisco and I reinstalled his IM5006 and connected up all the speakers to it. And when I powered it up, what I found was the intercom worked correctly, the radio worked correctly, the doorbell rang as it should, but there was still a very small amount of constant or sporadic, would probably be a better term, static on the remote speakers periodically. It didn't happen continuously, but every 10 or 15 seconds there would be these little bits of static and crackly sounds. And at that point, I realized that my 45 minute service call was gonna become a lot, lot, lot longer. Let's take a look at the layout of his system because that will help you understand the troubleshooting that I had to do yesterday. So this is a representation of his system. It consists of one IM5006 master station. He has a total of eight IS515 remote speakers, and those eight speakers are connected back to the master station with seven Newtone IW6 cables. And here's a representation of his system. Here's his IM5006 master station. This was in the entry hallway, and his speakers are master bathroom, master bedroom, den, office, kitchen, dining room, and then downstairs are a garage and a workshop speaker. And all these six speakers are all home run back to the master station. They all have their individual cable of IW6, but the garage and the workshop speaker are loop wired. So the garage speaker has its own IW6 that goes back to the master station, but the workshop speaker is looped off of the garage speaker. This is perfectly acceptable in a 5006 installation. So even though we have a total of eight speakers back at the master station, we have seven individual cables. To troubleshoot a problem like I had yesterday with static on the system, there are three likely causes of that type of problem. 
It could be a problem with the master station itself. However, since I had just repaired the master station and the static wasn't an issue at the shop, I didn't think that was going to be the problem. It could be a problem with one of the remote stations or possibly more than one of them and it could always be a wiring problem. So these are three things that have to be checked and verified to find the cause of the problem. One of the difficulties in troubleshooting a system like the IM5006 is the way you have to look at it is every remote station is essentially like a master station. Most Newtone intercom systems, the master station is truly 90% of the operational part of the system and the remote speakers simply have a small board which contain a few push buttons, maybe a couple of diodes and a capacitor with a volume control and there really isn't a lot that can go wrong. The switches can get dirty and things like that, normal wear and tear, but they can't usually cause a great amount of problems with the system on a whole. On a 5006 system, the IS515 speakers, it's almost as if every single station is a master station. And this is the circuit board out of an IM or an IS515 speaker. This is the back side of the board. These are the terminals where the wires are connected. This is the little dip switch assembly that you use to code the identification number into the speaker. You have yet again another microprocessor. You have a lot of little tiny surface mounted components. And then when you flip it over, you have more on the, on the back side of the board. Each one of these stations actually has built into it its own individual power supply. Each station has its own built-in amplifier, plus there's the intercom control and audio circuits. So there's a lot going on on these type of uh, stations, and these boards can have intermittent failures or flaws in them, and that can cause the exact kind of problem that this customer was experiencing. Individual remote station with some bad components can be creating the static noise that's on his system. So troubleshooting a system like this is not a trivial thing to do. You have to be very uh, methodical about how you go about it. So let me explain to you how you do that. So we have our list of three things to check. Master station, remote stations, and wiring. And we're going to check them in this order because this is the logical order to do it in. Uh, it's the most, also the most efficient order when you're at a customer's house to go through the equipment and try to find the problem. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to recheck the master station. Now even though I rebuilt the master station just a week before and it was at the shop and it worked correctly, we're not going to assume anything. One of the rules of good troubleshooting is check and verify, never assume. If you assume this is good without rechecking it, you may miss a fundamental problem and then every all the time you spend after step one is wasted time because step one could be the problem. So what's the easiest way to check the master station? Well we'll go back to our diagram and this represents the block connector on the main board of a 5006 and this is where there are six connections and the color coding matches the color coding in the Newtone IW6 you have orange, orange, white, red, red, white, black, black, white, and those colors from each one of those cables are connected into the, each of those terminals. So you have six or seven in this case, red wires, seven red, white wires, and so forth down the line. So the easiest way to check the IM5006 is by simply disconnecting all the wires from the block connector so you've isolated the master station from all of the wiring and all of the remote speakers. So all I have to do is first there's a testing order and you have to obey the testing order on a 5006 system otherwise you can damage the master station or damage the remote speakers. The testing order is one power down the system in this case, it means disconnecting the 5006 from its transformers that power it. Disconnect the remote station, and that's whether you're disconnecting all of them here at this block or you're doing them individually. Then power the system back up, observe your results, and then repeat the process as many times as you need to until you find the problem. So I powered down the system and I disconnected 
all the wires from the terminal block. And then I powered the system back up, and now that the IM5000 master station has been isolated from all of the wiring and all of the remote speakers, I observed it, and I gave it a couple of minutes to give it a fair chance, and it was static-free, the radio worked correctly, the door chime, which was still connected, still worked properly, so I was pretty convinced that the master station was fine, just as it was when it was at the shop. So we can check off master station off the list of things to check. Now we're going to move on to the remote speakers. The way I prefer to check the remote speakers individually is by disconnecting them behind each of the speaker locations. I find it to be more efficient than disconnecting them one at a time at the master station. So to do this test, the first thing you have to do is reconnect all of the wires back to the block connector because we're going to be testing the operation of the system so of course you have to have the system and the remote speakers connected to the master station to do the test. I began with the master bathroom speaker once again I have to follow my testing order where I powered down the system I went to the master bathroom speaker took it off the wall disconnected the wire from it, went back to the master station and powered up the system and observed the results. Unfortunately, it didn't solve the problem. I still had static on the system with the master bathroom disconnected. So then I continued on one station at a time. I did the master bedroom. Same testing order every single time. You can't skip it. You have to power it down. You have to then disconnect the speaker, then power it back up, observe your results, and repeat. The master bedroom speaker didn't solve the problem. Neither did the den, or the office, or the kitchen, or the dining room. So at that point, I had six of the seven cable runs disconnected. We're counting the garage and the workshop as one station for the time being because it's on its own home run cable. At that point, I decided the best thing to do would be to go down and disconnect the workshop speaker from the garage speaker. So I disconnected that, followed my testing order once again, and I still had static on the system. So at that point, I was feeling pretty lucky. I'm figuring, well, it has to be the garage speaker because that's the only one that's left. So once again, I followed my testing order and I went back down to the garage and I disconnected the garage speaker from the cable, powered the system back up, and guess what? I still had static on the system. So at this point, it's a little frustrating and there's a lot of running back and forth through the customer's house while you do this. But we know now for a fact that it's not a problem with the remote stations because at this point the remote stations have all been disconnected. So we can check off remote sta stations as a thing to check and that only leaves us with one last thing and that's the wiring. And it is always possible, even in an installation that's been in somebody's house for 13 years, that a cape somewhere a cable has rubbed through on a staple that's holding the wire in place, or maybe a mouse chewed on the cable, or it's stretched over something that's metal in the attic or somewhere in the framing of the house, and it's worn through, and it's causing a, an intermittent short or a small short in the cable, and that's what's the source of the static. Now it's time to start checking cables. At this point in the customer's house, we don't know yet which cable at the, behind the master station goes exactly to which location, and that's kind of an important thing to know. I like to be organized when I do my troubleshooting, so I decided the best way to do this would be to disconnect the cables from the master station and I randomly chose two wires to use as my identification pair and those wires I decided to use are red and orange. So what I did was I started in the master bathroom again because when I do troubleshooting I always 
repeat what I've done over and over and over again. There's no reason to reinvent the wheel every time you go through a system looking for a problem. Be methodical. This one, 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 every single time you go through the house. You don't have to rethink it, just do it the same every single time. So I went to the master bathroom speaker, I twisted together the red and orange wires, and I came back to the master station, and I tested each set of red and orange wires in each cable until I identified which cable went to the master bathroom and I simply put a marker on it and called it number one. I went through and did that with all the speakers until I had them all labeled. And this just helps keep it organized for me so it doesn't get confusing and you're not checking cables that you previously checked because you didn't mark it. It's important not to waste time when you're at a customer's house. Once I had all of the cables identified by number, now it was time to start checking individual wires in each and every cable to see if we had either shorts or brakes. And I previously have done a video that, help, that shows you how to troubleshoot cables for shorts and brakes. And to learn how to do that, you should watch that video. I'm not going to repeat all of that here. But simply what you do is Newton wire consists of pairs of red and red white and orange and orange white and black and black white. So what you do is you take your multimeter on continuity. And first you check the red, red, what you twist together, the, the similar colored pairs at the station. You check for continuity, that you have a connection through the circuit on a red, red, white, and then the orange, orange, white, then the black, black, white. If all of those are good, that means none of those wires are broken. Then what you do is you separate the pairs at the, at, behind the speaker. So you have your IW6 cable and you have your six individual wires and none of them are touching, so they're all open. And then you go back to the master station and you check continuity on every possible combination. So you start with red and then red, white, and red and orange, and red and orange, white, and red and black, and red and black, white. And what you're looking for are shorts in the cable. If you have a connection, if you have a short between the red and the black, that's going to create a problem in how your system operates and that's no good. So you first we check for shorts and then we check for brakes. I went through each and every single cable doing that. And again, it takes a lot of time to do that. And as I went through, I found a cable that had no continuity. It seemed as if the entire cable had a break in it. And just for the sake of argument, we're going to say it was number six. So that seemed very odd because even though we had static on the system, basically all the functions on all the speakers did operate. So how could that have been possible if I have a cable that appears to be bad? I decided at that point the best way to go would be to take this cable, number six we'll call it, and put it off to the side and leave it disconnected from the system. And then one by one, I went around and I reconnected each speaker and reconnected the cable from each speaker back to the system. Again, following the testing order, power the system down. In this case, reconnect the remote speaker, power the system back up, observe the results. Observe the results when you're reassembling a system is basically testing the functionality of the, of the remote speaker that you've just reconnected and then repeat the process for the next speaker. So I went through in the same order I've been using before, master bath, master bedroom, den, office, kitchen, dining room. I did these six first because they're all on the same level and it's a lot quicker that way. And as I went through the testing order and reconnected each one, each speaker did operate and we didn't have any static anymore. So I felt like I was making good progress. So then I get down to the very last one and it turns out that the cable that had a problem actually seemed at that moment to be the cable 
that went downstairs to the garage. Again, at that point, I have all of the speakers reconnected to the master station, with the exception of the garage and therefore the workshop speaker. And I'm thinking, well, this should be pretty easy. So I decided at that point, the best thing to do was retest the wire. And the wire still didn't test good. There was no reading on the wire whatsoever, which really doesn't make any sense. I guess we have to reconnect our speakers here, don't we? All right. Now it'll work. All right. It doesn't make any sense. You sort of have to make a leap. And the leap I like to make is what I call a tactical leap. You can sit there and in the customer's house and think about this and think about this and think about this, but that doesn't really get you anywhere. What you have to do is that you're there, there to fix it and to fix it, you have to do something. So I decided, well, since th these speakers were working before, let's go ahead and just hook them back up to the wires behind this speaker and the wires behind this speaker and let's see what we get. Now you have to remember the other end of the cable is still disconnected behind the master station. It's just dangling next to the master station, not connected to anything. So I figure I'll hook the speaker back up. It was working before and let's see what we get. So I did that. I reconnected the workshop to the garage and I reconnected the garage speaker to the IW6 that came into that, powered the system back up and guess what? It worked. This one worked and this one worked and all of these continued to work and there was no static. How is that possible? Because this end of the cable from the garage speaker is still disconnected. It's not tied into the system at all. Well, the answer to that is the cable that's disconnected that was left off the master station isn't the cable that goes to the garage speaker. It turns out that it's very likely that the garage speaker and the workshop speaker are tied into either the dining room or the kitchen speaker. Uh, it's not tied into either one of these. These speakers are directly above the garage on the same wall. If it is tied into one of these, it's not tied in on the back of the speaker itself, which is the way it should have been done. It's tied in somewhere, probably mid-run, in the framing somewhere in the house, or maybe in the attic that you can't get to or something like that. So that's why the garage and the workshop speaker came back and worked once I reconnected the wires behind the speakers while still having the run that was left off the master station disconnected. So what does this tell us? It would seem on the surface that everything adds up. Same number of home run locations, they match the number of cables behind the system and so on and so on. And this house, if you look at the layout of the house, it doesn't seem that there would have been another inside speaker somewhere in the house. There really aren't enough rooms for that. Uh, there aren't any places where it looks like there's patches on the wall like a speaker were taken out or something like that. So this is what I suspect. Sometime in the past when the system was new, there was one more station. And I think based on what I saw that that station was an IS519, which is a patio station and it was probably on the deck that's off the master bedroom. Uh, the master, the exterior of the house now has vinyl siding on it, on the back of the house anyway, but the rest of the house is wood siding and the current homeowner said that the vinyl siding was probably put on two or three years before they bought the house and moved in. And what I suspect is at the original installation included a 519 patio speaker, which is, was originally wired into our mystery cable. Most likely what happened was at some point the 519 speaker failed uh, because it's out in the weather and this deck has no cover whatsoever, it's totally exposed. So a speaker like the 519 wouldn't last very long in that type of environment. 
and probably when the previous homeowners had the vinyl siding put on the house, either the speaker was simply covered over and it's water damaged and it doesn't work pro correctly, or the speaker itself was removed and the wires were just left unterminated behind the vinyl siding. It's a problem because you never ever on any intercom system, but certainly never on a system like the 5006, want to have, you want to have a cable that's terminated at the master station, but is left unterminated at the other end. You need something on it. Or if you have an outdoor speaker, again, we go back to our hugely complicated circuit board. Can you imagine what happens to this when it's outside and exposed to the weather for six or eight years and it gets wet and it corrodes and rusts and you get all these short circuits on it? That's really bad news. And there's your source of your static. This was a little bit of a, of a hunt to find the problem, but it illustrates the steps that you have to go through to solve a problem like this for a customer. It came down to, it wasn't the master station, it wasn't the remote speakers, it ended up to be the wiring that was a problem, but it wasn't, but the trick was that there was an, un, it was unknown that these speakers were looped into another run, and this was an abandoned run to a patio station. So all I had to do to solve the problem was leave this line disconnected from the master station. We don't care what's going on up here anymore because that's gone. Can't find it, don't care. Once I left this disconnected and everything else was reconnected, the static was gone, the customer was happy, and altogether this took almost two and a half hours to do. So it's a lot of running around back and forth checking things, measuring things, being methodical, following the correct testing order to solve the problem. So that's a good example of the type of troubleshooting you have to do on a system sometimes to find the problems. I hope this video helps you and I hope you find it interesting. If you do, please like it on YouTube. The like button is down there. If you think our, our videos are useful, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you subscribe to our channel, it means it raises our videos in the search rankings, which means more people will find them and they'll be able to solve their intercom problems also. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next video.